If you guys want to see something absolutely horrific today, then stay tuned. I got it right here. What's up guys and welcome to another installment of A Computers and Technology. I know I'm doing things a little bit differently than I said I would as far as the failure videos go and that's probably going to happen quite a bit with this series. I'm just going to change it up with these episodes a lot so just a little heads up there. But in my hands I have a EVGA NVIDIA GeForce FX 5200 and you know you're looking at it and you're like there's, there's nothing really special about that but if I flip it over uh, are you guys ready for this nightmare? And, and a lot of you probably already saw this in my uh, uh, Pentium 4 gaming PC overview. I picked this uh, computer up at a garage sale and all the capacitors were blown. And then I tried to replace them and this was really my first project with actually removing and replacing capacitors and it didn't go too well as you will see. Um, the card does work so that's a plus there but uh, it definitely doesn't look pretty. So let me just uh, flip it around here. And oh my god, isn't that a nightmare? Let me go ahead and give you guys a closer look at this. Uh, and I will plug this into a uh, AGP slot and we will see that this card actually does function still. There we go, now you guys can get a better look at this monstrosity, but every video that I feature this card in, whether I'm using it for an experiment or I'm actually doing an overview on it like I was with the uh, Pentium 4 gaming PC, I get a ton of comments about this card. Everyone is like, what the heck is wrong with that video card? Well, now every time someone asks, I can just send them a link and they can pop right over here and check it out. So I'll tell you the story in just a minute. And I'm sorry if my voice does start to sound a little bit scratchy. I've been sick for the past week and it really screwed up last week week's uh, video schedule uh, and it made this week absolutely miserable as far as school uh, has gone because you know I can't talk it's been really really hard to talk all right so taking a look at the card you can see uh, that I have these random capacitors just sticking out of the board and this was my first capacitor replacement job uh, on any sort of computer uh, equipment and to make matters worse, I didn't have the right capacitor values on hand. Uh, these capacitors that were originally here, that blue, uh, wore 1000 microfarad 16 volt capacitors, I think. Um, so yeah, I had to take two 470 microfarad capacitors, tie them up in parallel using the leads. So I just tied the leads together and soldered them together. And then I put them on the board. The problem with that is that I couldn't get them all the way down to the board. As you can see, they're sticking up. Uh, at the most about an inch right here off the board and that is kind of dangerous. And you know, it may look god awful, but the card actually worked when I finished the repair and I was really surprised. I did not think that in this configuration I would get anything out of the card, but you know, two or three years ago I almost cracked myself when I turned this thing on and I actually got a video output. It was uh, pretty surprising and uh, you guys are probably pretty surprised too. Uh, and just to show that I'm not messing with you guys, I am about to throw this into a PC and we can actually boot it up and check out the video output. And I think the Antec power supply in that PC finally, finally decided to die because uh, I kept thinking that it was dead and then all of a sudden it would come back to life. But now, you know, it's just given up completely. So I had to uh, resort to Old Fateful right here. And I have the card in its AGP slot right now. Uh, this is just going to be a very quick test of the card. If you want to see a little bit more of the card in action, you can go ahead and check out my Pentium 4 gaming PC overview. It's one of the older videos, so you'll definitely definitely be able to see how much I have improved uh, within I think it's only been like eight or nine months since then uh, but yeah it's definitely one of the older videos so you might get bored with it I'm gonna go ahead and turn this thing on now I'm go just going to uh, bring up a system message it's sh it should say insert boot device or something like that and then we should see the uh, Intel Pentium 4 splash screen as well so I'm gonna go ahead and power this on And you should briefly see the splash screen. There you go. And then that boot device message should come up in just a second. That's one of those uh, other things that came out funny message. I meant to say message, not masha whatever I just said. There we go. And you can see the card is functioning. Once again, if you want to see a little bit more of this card in action, go ahead and check out that link in the description. All right, so that's going to be about it for this installment of A Computers and Technology. I know this really ended up being more of a show and tell, but it was still pretty interesting. I know some of you technicians and computer engineers out there aren't going to be able to sleep easy now knowing that there's a card with such a botched up capacitor job. I'm sorry, guys. 
Uh, but anyway, on that note, I'm going to end this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video. If you didn't like it, please tell me why. Uh, and of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next episode of A Computers and Technology.